uh, two research seminars for this invitation. Um, so today, uh, as you mentioned, I will speak about crowdfunding for the arts, culture and the creative industries, uh, which is one of my major uh, research strengths uh, at the moment. Um, so uh, just to position my, uh, my research, uh, crowdfunding in the culture and creative industries uh, uh, is an important matter because of the dramatic shrinking of public and private funding uh, and therefore uh, this uh, alternative or compl complementary form of uh, fundraising uh, is uh, getting in more and more importance uh, in particular donation and reward based uh, crowdfunding and uh, this kind of fundraising is uh, particularly aimed uh, at supporting uh, projects uh, rather than uh, uh, organizations as a whole. And uh, today we will consider uh, what are the two major markets uh, for crowdfunding worldwide, so namely the United States uh, and Europe. Um, the research questions uh, I will address uh, today uh, are about uh, the untapped potential of uh, crowdfunding for the, the CCI. Um, so there is, there is an issue out there. And this uh, untapped potential uh, is uh, because, well, this is what uh, I will uh, analyze because of lack of transparency and capacity of operators' uh, financial practices. And actually, this is a uh, a general issue among uh, cultural creative entrepreneurs. So their uh, relative lack of uh, financial uh, uh, skills uh, and managerial skills. This is also why we have uh, this business for uh, the creative industry at UCA. Uh, other issues uh, related to this uh, untapped potential is the lack of trust of operators. Uh, and differently binding or favoring national fiscal regulatory frameworks. Uh, that's why I will also uh, touch upon uh, policy recommendations, how to improve this problem. And uh, despite that, uh, crowdfunding for the CCI uh, is uh, growing quite fastly. Um, but with some barriers. Uh, so um, today uh, we will look at uh, uh, different benefits and barriers for crowdfunding, especially for the purpose of uh, um, enabling this uh, practice better among uh, artists and creative professionals and we will conclude with some uh, policy recommendations in particular in terms of uh, uh, possible regulations that can be adopted in order to support uh, crowdfunding for the CCI. Uh, the methodological approaches, uh, <clears throat> I'm sorry, today uh, are mainly to uh, review of the existing uh, scholarly literature as well as uh, industry reports, uh, also to take into consideration the current practice as, far, as well as uh, economic modeling. So the main contributions uh, are about uh, the analysis of development of the funding for the CCI in the US and Europe, uh, analysis of benefits and barriers, uh, the contribution of a simple model uh, of uh, crowdfunding benefits, uh, a critical comparison from an economic uh, perspective of uh, regulatory frameworks, uh, and uh, an outline of major areas of interventions uh, for public policy, um, as well as recommendations. Mainly, uh, I'm referring here, so I'm, uh, I'm talking about uh, two uh, quite recent publications uh, that I produced together with my colleague uh, uh, Douglas Noonan from uh, Indiana University. Uh, so the 2020 publication from uh, the International Journal of Cultural Policy and uh, the uh, forthcoming publication uh, uh, by Springer uh, mm, uh, foreseen for next month, uh, cultural initiatives uh, for a sustainable development. Uh, 
Mm, just to position this, uh, this research, we are in the context of fundraising, fundraising by artists, creative professionals, uh, as well as uh, creative organizations, uh, where this fundraising is defined uh, as a series of strategic planning activities aimed at searching and gathering uh, financial and non-financial resources from different sources, both public and private, to realize or support a project, an institution, or an organization through an integrated approach. And I would like to underline the integrated aspect of fundraising, because just to consider the private support side of fundraising, we can have a different uh, uh, number of uh, uh, fundraising uh, uh, modes, uh, including sponsorship, uh, partnership, uh, philanthropy, corporate social responsibility, volunteering, and uh, crowdfunding. Crowdfunding, uh, which, as I mentioned, is uh, getting an increasing importance. Uh, crowdfunding, as we know, uh, comes from uh, individuals. So it is about uh, is uh, the most individual uh, um, type of private support for the arts and culture. And for instance, uh, if we look at the situation in the United States, uh, some data from the National Endowment for the Arts, uh, we can see that, uh, and therefore, uh, um, and here I would like to refer to the US slash Anglo-Saxon uh, um, culture of uh, supporting arts organizations, uh, uh, which is uh, uh, quite importantly uh, Based. So the private sector is very important in supporting the arts and culture, differently from, uh, uh, for instance, continental Europe, where the public sector has uh, a more uh, important role. But if we look at this graph, we can see that uh, uh, more than 20% of uh, the sources of income in U.S. arts organization is individual based. So this is an important prerequisite for the success of crowdfunding because crowdfunding, I repeat, uh, comes from uh, individuals. Um, but there is a problem connected with that, and that is uh, transaction costs. Because one thing is to get the support of a big foundation, a big corporation, uh, either uh, in the form of sponsorship, uh, donations, etc. Another thing is uh, uh, to keep um, a relationship with every single individual uh, supporter or donor. And uh, here comes uh, uh, crowdfunding to solve uh, uh, this major uh, barrier, uh, that is to increase, uh, possibly increase the uh, the role played by individuals uh, in supporting uh, arts, culture, and the creative industries. Um, crowdfunding for the arts and culture uh, is a derivation from general crowdfunding. So general crowdfunding that is not specifically applied uh, to the arts, culture, and the creative industries uh, uh, is the one that uh, was born first, uh, thanks uh, to digitization. Uh, digitization, that is uh, the use of, uh, uh, of the internet, allows to reduce the transaction costs because you just need uh, uh, a few uh, quick and inexpensive operations uh, uh, on, the, on the internet in order to transfer funds, uh, uh, which is much less elaborated than, uh, than being contacted, uh, uh, sending uh, uh, money, etc., etc., as it was uh, uh, in the traditional ways. Um, general crowdfunding is uh, uh, a form of crowdsourcing uh, and uh, or complementary finance, depending on uh, uh, the type of crowdfunding and depending also on the different uh, um, purposes of uh, crowdfunding. Uh, generally, crowdfunding uh, is more uh, um, uh, apt to fund projects or ventures, not uh, the general uh, uh, operations of an organization. And uh, 
It works by raising uh, monetary contributions, uh, which are called pledges, uh, for a given amount from a large number of people, that is the crowd. So the, 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 the mass, uh, the threshold, uh, the uh, efficacy of crowdfunding is to have a large mass of people, of individuals, uh, each contributing even a minimum amount. Um, general crowdfunding was born uh, especially uh, among uh, tech companies because they had they have the technology as well as entrepreneurs in order to uh, to gather venture capital and uh, it is also quite diffused uh, among uh, social entrepreneurs and uh, uh, also for general crowdfunding uh, the major markets are the united states but also the united kingdom and other european countries uh, although uh, worldwide we are assisting as well to an increase of the importance of crowdfunding uh, what we can notice about crowdfunding in general is uh, very good news expanding market uh, less good news uh, is a still fragmented market. And we see that this is a, a problem, especially for crowdfunding for the arts, culture, and creative industries. Uh, if we can uh, give uh, uh, a rough estimate, uh, this market is worth about 30 billion uh, pounds. Uh, worldwide and uh, it includes different forms uh, donation reward equity and lending crowdfunding what about crowdfunding for uh, uh, the cci uh, similarly to general crowdfunding is increasing also due to the shrinking of public and private funding and similarly to uh, general uh, mm, uh, crowdfunding, uh, the major markets are the United States uh, and Europe. Uh, crowdfunding for the arts and culture is uh, uh, oriented uh, toward projects uh, like general, uh, uh, like general uh, crowdfunding, but is not really uh, oriented towards structured finance. Uh, and the two major forms uh, are reward and donation crowdfunding. So and lending crowdfunding are quite less the case uh, in, uh, in our sector of the CCR. Rewards, example rewards, uh, limited editions, uh, tours, for instance, uh, you can uh, join if you uh, uh, provide, uh, if you send pledges to a music group, uh, you can uh, be invited to tours uh, uh, or to networking sessions. Uh, you can get prototypes, for instance, if you decide uh, to support uh, a young fashion uh, stylist uh, or um, uh, a writer, etc. Similarly to general crowdfunding, uh, crowdfunding for the CCI uh, was first developed and uh, the major markets are the United States, the United Kingdom and other European countries and similarly to general crowdfunding is growing in the rest of the world. Um, fragmentation is a major issue with the crowdfunding for uh, the CCI, more than uh, uh, general crowdfunding. And this fragmentation is in terms of different models of crowdfunding, uh, uh, the geographical distribution of the different platforms, uh, the scope of these platforms, uh, uh, the different CCI sectors targeted by the different platforms, because, uh, uh, well, we all know uh, probably Kickstarter, which is uh, the most uh, known the most popular uh, platform for uh, funding for the arts, culture, and creative industries, but uh, there are uh, thousands uh, and more platforms uh, around the world, and we can have platforms, for instance, specialized just uh, on movies, uh, on literature, on uh, um, music, live music, uh, uh, visual arts, etc., etc., etc. And uh, fragmentation is also about information, so especially in terms of regulation and uh, asymmetry of information, um, involved skills and, uh, and regulation, as I was mentioning. And uh, 
uh, a quite key feature of crowdfunding for the CCI, uh, which makes uh, uh, research on crowdfunding for the CCI uh, worth, uh, especially worth, is that uh, crowdfunding for the CCI um, goes beyond financial support uh, for the CCI, goes beyond uh, to uh, support the project, goes beyond uh, uh, to launch uh, a young organization, because it is also very much about community engagement, uh, it is about audience development, uh, skills development, uh, that is uh, uh, to operate in, uh, in crowdfunding uh, increases the skills, the market skills, the financial skills, uh, the business skills of uh, uh, creative uh, professionals. Uh, it is also a tremendous tool for promotion as well as uh, for market research. Uh, if we just consider Europe, we can count more than 600 cultural creative platforms uh, operating in our continent. And uh, if we can provide rough estimates, um, it, uh, it, it represents a turnover of about 4 million pounds a year. So we are quite below the billions of general crowdfunding, but uh, for such uh, for such a sector are big numbers. And uh, more we can assist at uh, interesting trends uh, in terms of modes of crowdfunding. And uh, a quite interesting one is uh, match funding, which involves uh, uh, the collaboration between uh, private support and public support. Uh, here is an example of, from uh, Kickstarter, so uh, the, the, most popular, uh, the most popular platform. Uh, so this is one example of project that is currently uh, being uh, uh, offered on this on this platform so you can see the amount to be raised the number of backers so far the amount of money raised and then on the right hand side the different types of rewards uh, that is a symbolic uh, um, a symbolic prizes uh, 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 that you receive if you back at the different levels uh, at the different amount of money, uh, money the different uh, the different project. In this case, uh, we can grow together project. Um, talking about the geographical distribution of uh, uh, crowdfunding, here we have some uh, recent uh, statistics uh, provided by the European Commission. Uh, this is the distribution of intensity of crowdfunding for the CCI, and we can see that the United Kingdom uh, is the European champion uh, because uh, uh, we have uh, the highest number, well, a uh, little bit more than, uh, than France uh, in terms of uh, number of campaigns launched and also uh, the amount of money raised. Uh, so, um, and if we compare the two dimensions, uh, we can also comment that uh, um, in the UK, crowdfunding campaigns are more effective because uh, uh, you need relatively less campaign, uh, campaigns uh, to raise more money. And uh, this is uh, the, the situation, the geographical situation <coughs> in the United States, uh, where it is interesting uh, to observe uh, um, the national distribution also in terms of uh, creative hubs. Uh, the national distribution of uh, uh, money raised through crowdfunding for the, for the CCI and uh, <clears throat> the concentration of creative hubs. So not by chance, uh, we have a high activity on the East Coast uh, and uh, in, uh, in California. I would like now to uh, focus our attentions, uh, <coughs> attention, sorry, on the benefits of crowdfunding for the CCI. 
So, uh, among our findings, uh, uh, we can stress that uh, crowdfunding for uh, the CCI is rele relevant for its uh, economic, informative, uh, promotional, and also co-creative and democratizing features. And uh, <clears throat> in our publications, uh, uh, we, we list, analyze, and discuss uh, uh, a series of direct uh, as well as indirect benefits uh, of uh, crowdfunding for, uh, for the CCI. Uh, direct benefits uh, include the lower transaction costs for fundraising, uh, and I will uh, uh, speak uh, more about that in the next slide. Um, better outreach of larger audience and market, uh, increased project viability, uh, thanks to uh, the market research that is implied, because when you launch a, a crowdfunding campaign, you also test uh, uh, you test the market. Because of course, if you have a lot of backers, it means that your prototype, your creative business idea uh, is uh, successful. And so you have better chances uh, uh, to really uh, have uh, uh, interesting results out in the market. Um, crowdfunding also uh, allows uh, geographical spread and specialization uh, because uh, even if you belong to a niche market, which is typically the case of the CCI, uh, thanks to this uh, digitalized uh, mode of not only fundraising but also to promote uh, uh, to promote your uh, products or services. Uh, uh, you can get a higher geographical spread at the same time keeping your specialization. Market research, prototype testing, and also improve the information and reduce uncertainty. That is uh, uh, the problem of uh, asymmetrical uh, uh, information that typically exists uh, in the arts, culture, and creative. Uh, uh, industries because uh, the quality of creative products and services is not so uh, straightforward. So not everybody can uh, uh, fully grasp uh, uh, the creative content uh, that is proposed. And um, another interesting feature talking about uh, creativity creation is uh, the more interaction that uh, is possible through crowdfunding between the creators and the prospective backers. And uh, talking about match funding, that is uh, um, uh, fostering uh, a virtuous uh, cycle that is attracting even more, if possible, uh, uh, public uh, funds and subsidies, uh, success in uh, crowdfunding can uh, uh, boost uh, um, higher subsidies from the uh, public sector, in particular through match funding. Uh, next to direct benefits, we can also account for a series of indirect benefits, uh, including democratization of funding, because you can understand that uh, virtually any uh, individual can, uh, uh, can be a backer. Uh, you, can, uh, you can pledge one pound uh, 100 pound, 1,000 pound, whatever, you are a founder and you participate uh, in supporting uh, um, a creative professional, an artist, uh, uh, an arts organization. So this is the democratization. And uh, similarly to what happens uh, with the boosting uh, public subsidies uh, uh, through uh, a successful uh, uh, crowdfunding campaign, you have also better chances to attract other types of more traditional capital. And uh, talking about the skills of artists, the business skills, the financial skills of artists uh, and creative professionals, uh, um, crowdfunding, because of the uh, skills that are required in order to prepare a campaign, uh, 
to write a business plan, uh, to promote the idea, um, to negotiate with the platform, uh, to interact with the backers in order to test the prototype, etc. Uh, this uh, activity of uh, crowdfunding fosters entrepreneurship and the development of professional skills among the artists and creative professionals. And uh, once again, the community engaged or involvement um, feature is very important. Uh, so we can see that there are clear social uh, inclusiveness uh, um, features uh, in uh, crowdfunding for the CCI. And last but not least, the co-creation uh, with audiences. That is, backers can uh, provide uh, suggestions, ideas in order to perf per per perfection the creative business idea or the prototype. Um, uh, in uh, the international, international cultural policy um, paper that we have published uh, uh, with Douglas uh, uh, a few months ago, uh, we also uh, we have also uh, contributed uh, um, a novel, though simple, uh, model for equity-based and reward-based crowdfunding. Uh, so on the left hand side. Uh, as economists, uh, you can see the, the graphic uh, presentation of this model. Right hand side, you have uh, the reward based model graphic uh, representation. So uh, you have the demand and you have the supply uh, represented by the variable cost. The variable cost of what? Of uh, 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 getting, uh, uh, of fundraising, of getting the capital in order to fund uh, your project. Uh, so, uh, this double model, um, theoretical model, basically, looks at uh, backers in two ways. Uh, because backers can be uh, considered as investors uh, when they uh, give the money, uh, their pledges are a form of investment put in our project. But they can, they can also be uh, seen as uh, consumers uh, who make uh, advanced purchases. Uh, this is especially the case of reward crowdfunding because they get something in return, right? And um, in either way, we consider our, uh, our backers. Uh, uh, so from in the equity-based model, we can see that there is uh, a decrease of cost, which is good uh, for our project. It costs less to raise our money to fund our project. And here we, instead, there is an effect on the demand because we increase the overall demand for our creative um, uh, product or service. So uh, these are good news because uh, crowdfunding can make uh, our, uh, our firm, uh, small, medium, or even micro firm, because we know that on average, uh, uh, creative uh, firms uh, count less than two employees, which is uh, uh, quite small, and um, so crowdfunding can uh, uh, increase the efficiency of uh, creative firms, at the same time uh, improving uh, the opportunities uh, uh, to, uh, to increase uh, their markets also on an in, in international scale, which is uh, typically the case of niche markets uh, like the CCI. Uh, crowdfunding is not a perfect mechanism uh, to, to raise money. Also, crowdfunding, like other fundraising uh, uh, mechanisms, presents some barriers. And uh, these barriers uh, are also analyzed and dealt with in our publication that uh, I referred to. And uh, these barriers include information asymmetry uh, because uh, Imagine you have uh, a beautifully presented project, uh, most uh, popular uh, crowdfunding platform uh, is well sold, etc. And uh, this project attracts a lot of money. Uh, but who guarantees us that this is truly a, a good project and that will uh, successfully perform on the market? Uh, so this is uh, uh, a quite important barrier called uh, information asymmetry. 
And moreover, there is also a lack of, uh, uh, of transparency uh, because, uh, um, uh, because of similar reasons. Another, uh, another issue with the crowdfunding for the CCI is that uh, uh, it favors superstars. Why? Uh, because uh, it is observed, uh, empirically observed, that uh, CCI presents uh, a convergence uh, of tastes. So basically, the population of backers and potential backers uh, tend uh, to uh, converge uh, on the same projects uh, to mm. support uh, very much uh, the same project and to neglect other projects. Uh, there is also the risk of backers fraud in the sense that we could have uh, perfectly uh, fake projects. Um, this uh, has been observed, uh, even though empirically speaking, uh, um, uh, it has also been observed that this is uh, a relatively less important barrier to the growth and expansion of crowdfunding for the CCI. And from the artist and creative professional perspective, uh, uh, there is a great risk of intellectual, to intellectual property rights uh, exposure in the sense that uh, when uh, you present a project uh, on any crowdfunding platform, uh, basically you expose uh, your artistic, your creative, creative idea. And this idea is not protected as such, so it can be stolen and there is no protection on, on that. So uh, there is clearly a trade-off, a compromise that needs uh, to be taken between all the benefits and uh, the barriers or uh, dis disadvantages of uh, uh, crowdfunding. And uh, regulation is very important because uh, regulation is uh, the policy leverage, uh, public policy leverage in order to try to reduce uh, uh, these barriers uh, at the same time uh, allowing all the benefits and possibly trying to increase them. Um, the current situation uh, starting from the United States uh, and Europe is that there is a very limited uh, regulation. So it's a very uh, from, from a legal perspective, crowdfunding is a very immature market, uh, very young, very dynamic, uh, also imply, imply dangers uh, with it. And moreover, uh, which is another problem, uh, there is a lack of harmonization between the different countries. Um, and this is uh, a problem. Uh, because uh, internet is uh, international, goes beyond uh, national borders, and therefore harmonization is, uh, is really important. Um, so, uh, we can draw some policy recommendations. We have drawn uh, some policy recommendations uh, where harmonization remains the greatest promise to reduce remove barriers uh, and expand uh, crowdfunding for the creative uh, industries, especially in Europe. But even Europe, uh, I'm referring here to uh, the, uh, the European Union, uh, which is a geographical, uh, political and geographical entity, also uh, sees a quite considerable uh, uh, disharmonized uh, regulation for crowdfunding for the arts and culture, more than other forms of crowdfunding, uh, like equity crowdfunding, lending crowdfunding. By talking with uh, uh, European uh, uh, functionaries uh, and policymakers uh, and discussing with them about that, uh, the typical uh, uh, response uh, that I get is because uh, you know, crowdfunding for the asset culture is not a big market uh, compared to equity crowdfunding, uh, lending crowdfunding, which are forms of crowdfunding uh, used in alternative to uh, uh, stocks uh, options. So here I'm talking about the big finance. Um, but also the United States uh, are characterized by uh, uh, quite reduced uh, harmonization. Um, another policy recommendation is in order to hinder 
the, the whole series of benefits uh, that we have seen is that uh, regulation needs to be supportive and not uh, um, oppressive, because in this way uh, would also limit uh, and danger the creativity and the creativity freedom of artists and creative professionals. And uh, so basically, among our recommendations is uh, uh, let's allow for this IP risk uh, to exist. Uh, let's allow creatives uh, uh, to risk to lose their artistic creative ideas uh, because um, the drawback is relatively uh, less important than uh, instead uh, imposing uh, uh, very stringent uh, regulations. Uh, so let's favor openness uh, and accessibility, risk tolerance, uh, creativity and innovation. And, um, and finally, uh, match funding, which is uh, a quite interesting uh, um, modality uh, for the public sector to collaborate with the private sector. So, to conclude, the crowdfunding for uh, the CCI uh, is uh, an important alternative or complement way of fundraising, uh, which is important because of the information that it uh, uh, carries, uh, uh, the promotion of uh, the artistic projects, uh, is co-creating and uh, is democratizing. Uh, as we have seen, uh, reward crowdfunding and donation crowdfunding are the dominant models uh, in crowdfunding for the CCI. Uh, and often in uh, general crowdfunding. We have seen the different benefits and barriers, uh, as well as how regulation, that is uh, public policy, uh, can play a role in that in order to uh, try to limit uh, the um, uh, uh, the negative aspects, uh, the limitations of uh, crowdfunding and uh, uh, boost the, uh, the positive aspects. Um, direction for future research, uh, so reward crowdfunding, donation of crowdfunding and crowdfunding for the CCI uh, is worth separate and focused research. So, uh, deserves uh, uh, more research, and uh, it is also important to, to dis disentangle the innovation, the creation, the creativity component uh, uh, in crowdfunding for uh, the cre creative arts. And um, other directions include uh, spillovers that can be, or synergies that can be um, originated from this uh, type of crowdfunding and uh, intellectual property uh, protection. Um, the first two directions are currently taken uh, care of uh, in uh, an ongoing project that we have international project that is funded by the Research Council of Norway, where UCA Business School for the Creative Industries is partner. Uh, I am the principal investigator in that, uh, and it's an international project, uh, this time looking at uh, uh, collecting uh, uh, a considerable amount of empirical data among artists and creative professionals uh, worldwide, uh, because uh, uh, we are gathering data in different European countries, from Norway to, uh, to Spain, UK, uh, as well as China, Brazil, uh, Etc. So a truly international uh, project uh, that will last until 2024, uh, with a number of uh, universities being involved. And uh, I would like to take the chance of this uh, seminar to make uh, a little announcement because we are hiring um, for the UK component of our research uh, in order to survey um, how UK artists and uh, creative professionals uh, really uh, use crowdfunding, uh, what is the value of crowdfunding for them, what is the concrete support they get from crowdfunding, are there any barriers for them in order to use crowdfunding. Uh, um, 
we are looking for a UCA researcher, PhD student or graduate with a solid research background and passion in service and empirical data in order to help us uh, to shed more light on uh, uh, British artists. So uh, if you're interested in that, please don't hesitate and contact me at this email address. And this is it. Thank you very much. Wonderful. Thank you very much, uh, Elisabetta. That was uh, not only interesting, but obviously ever more important and uh, an excellent opportunity at the end there. Um, I haven't seen any comments so far, so I wonder if anyone in the audience would like to use the raise hand function to ask any questions now. But if people are taking a second to gather their thoughts, I do have... Uh, an initial question. Oh, Alicia has just asked whether the PowerPoint will be available. Uh, the recording will be available afterwards. And that reminds me to just finish that.